I count myself extremely lucky that this gets to be my workspace. Like how many people get that opportunity to go to work and see animals, see green grass, have just like a beautiful, open, relatively quiet place to be. And it's really amazing to kind of be able to have this full experience of a farm being in the middle of Tucson. It's just gorgeous, especially in the morning. All of us are very much morning people, so you get to wake up with the sun. We've got beautiful sunrises and sunsets, and the animals are always really eager. They're waiting for their breakfast. As the animal care manager, my primary duties here are care of all of our animal herds that support our teaching curriculum. So we have horses, cattle, and sheep currently that are on site here. So me and my team make sure that their health and welfare is kept to the highest standards. And then when we have students on site and we have curriculum happening, we're actively supporting those students, supporting those animals, making sure everybody's safe and comfortable. One thing that's really cool about our program and our farm is that we're able to take in a lot of animals who might have weird things going on medically. So a big part of our morning is kind of getting all their medications in order. Each of them kind of have individualized diets, so we have to kind of prepare all of those in the morning. Most of the animals we have here are retired from whatever their past profession was. We like to call ourselves a retirement home because they have it really great here. They get all the care they need. They have a team of veterinarians just basically on call for them all the time. Our job encompasses animal care, and that is not just their physical care and their physical well-being, but that's mental and emotional too. And so we will take them out on walks to get them comfortable around the surroundings. We groom a lot. Every animal gets groomed at least once a week. These are our very, very lucky cows. They get to live here for their entire life. They're all retired cows from a dairy. We've got eight dairy cows and then two beef cows. They'll live here their whole lives. They're just like big pasture puppies. I love watching the sheep run down the lane every morning. Like that's better than a cup of coffee, like seeing them so excited. They know which truck is ours and they will run to the gate. We're hey girls. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like a waiter in a restaurant. They're ready. <laughs> One thing that we do is really get the animals comfortable to be in labs. So the whole purpose here is so that they could have hands-on interaction with students. The teaching areas we have here at the CAC, um, we're currently in the, what we call the Learning Center. So we have our models here. We have stocks for live horse labs where we do gastroscopy and things like that. If I'm evaluating a horse for cardiac issues, I want to know what the quality of the jugular pulse is. Is it strong? Is it going up the neck? Is there jugular fill? All of those things. This particular lab is going to be the cardiovascular and respiratory exam lab. So students will come out and have a chance to listen to the heart and the lungs of live horses, cattle, and dogs. What did you guys get for heart rate for Marshall? 28. On the equine side, we are doing 30 minutes listening to the heart and 30 minutes listening to the lungs and going over respiratory stuff. And then once we're done with the students and our hour is over at equine, they will shift to bovine. These guys, you'll notice some of them have little shaved patches on their coat. So they were recently used in like an ultrasound lab. So students learn about how to do ultrasounds, how to palpate a cow, blood draws, how to check the vitals of a cow. So they're wonderful teaching professors and they're very patient with our students. One of the coolest things is that typically students don't get to touch live animals for the first few years of school. And from here, it's 
almost day one, they're out there interacting with the animals, starting with things like safety, behavior, restraint, all of the kind of foundational stuff that then they get to build on. I love this farm. It's got so much history and it's impressive what has been built out here and what is maintained out here. When I get just tired of sitting in the front of a computer or sitting in a chair or just not being out, I can walk down the road and look at the horses and I have rounds with Skylar and her team and it is like renewing to the soul. In the afternoon, it's kind of the systemic shutting down of all of the pastures. All of the animals are kind of quiet and happy and settling in for the night, and there's just kind of this peace. I'll sometimes be out in a pasture, and I'll see somebody pull up with their kid, and they say, you know, we stop by every Tuesday afternoon after school because we have to go see the horses, and that's our favorite. And they like to ask questions about the animals. What are their names? What are they used for? Things like that. They have this role with the community and people want to know, people want to be engaged. This is their retirement, and I'm pretty sure like this is where I'm going to retire too, because it's just, it's wonderful. And it's nice that they continue to be able to work into their retirement, and they really serve such a valuable purpose. Like they're still working and teaching the future generations of veterinarians, which is so, so important. Hi, I'm Tom McNamara, host of Arizona Illustrated. Thanks so much for watching this story from our show. And for more local stories from Arizona Illustrated, just click right here.